Welcome to the weekly duck migration forecast for the 14th through 20th of December. We got a good one this week. We got a cold front coming through the prairies and upper Midwest and moving over towards the Great Lakes and even some snow events. So it should be a good week for duck movement. Did get some questions this week. I'm going to cover one of them from Brent from Southwest Louisiana. Says he's been keeping track of harvest since the 2010-2011 hunting season. Hunting was consistent all those years until 1718 when our harvest dropped about 60 to 70 percent and has dropped every hunting season since. Um, this is a generic question. I was wondering if you found any trends in the last four years that would contribute to a huge lack of birds migrating to the marshes of the Gulf Coast. We stare at empty skies now. Brent, uh, I feel for you. It's it's a mixed bag, right? We get mixed uh, reports from Louisiana in general. One of the first things we have to understand is the state of Louisiana shoots more ducks than, than the entire country of Canada. Um, and and your phenomenon recently um, is something that other people have experienced as well. And if we go back, you know, a decade or so ago, um, harvest in Louisiana was was greater. It was about twice what it is now. But understand that Louisiana's worst year is about on par with um, the high end years or or quality years for, you know, the upper upper Midwest, uh, you know, mid, mid latitudes of, sorry, mid latitudes of the Mississippi Flyway and such. So Louisiana still is getting a lot of ducks. Um, it's just not as spectacular as what it is, what it once was for sure. Interestingly, mallard harvest really hasn't dropped off over time in Louisiana. That might just be that folks are really targeting them when they can get into them as well. But, you know, one of the things we do know is going on on the coast of Louisiana. Is that there's been really substantial coastal marsh habitat loss. You got to understand that ducks are highly adaptable. They move around to where they can find habitat. And so a lot of this has to do with just changing environments and where they can find food and refugia. Right. Birds are dinosaurs. Dinosaurs never really went extinct. Um, birds were just the evolution of dinosaurs that could survive through the major changes that the planet's gone through through time. And you know that's one of the reasons that they the, the they have this adaptation where they can find the resources that they need. So you know habitat is the first thing I go to, but without knowing your specific location and what you have going on, I mean it's all about food and and refugia. It's a lot about food when weather conditions drive birds to need food, and then it's a lot about refugia when conditions are generally mild and birds can sit out disturbance. So. Brent, good luck. Um, you're not experiencing something that other folks haven't gone through, but even this year, I've seen a, a, a wicked mixed bag uh, on social media of folks from your part of the world where um, there's a lot of people that are that are killing limits of ducks um, if they're in the right location and other folks that aren't aren't seeing anything. Um, my recommendation really is to focus on all the other ducks. You know, if you're just focused on mallards, it might get a little slim. But, uh, you know, all the other ducks are certainly still getting to those latitudes, even with a with a changing climate. So good luck, Brent. Um, good question. And uh, holler at me if you have any more questions. Folks, please do send me your questions at weekly duck migration forecast at gmail .com. The snow cover map looks a little better this week, 2020 on the left, 2019 on the right. But what we see in 2019 is that there was a pretty good cold line. Uh, freeze line there in 19 that really hasn't even started to set up shop well in 2020. That line of snow that came in recently through mid latitudes and even down into Oklahoma is going to sweep east. Um, it looks like Tuesday night, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night is the best opportunity for snow at mid latitudes in the Atlantic Flyway as well. Uh, to the east of that snow line in Arkansas and in, in Missouri there, um, there was a bit of rain, which helped folks a little bit uh, over the last uh, 24 hours with getting some some rainfall in those areas. So snow cover is looking a little better. It should pick up a little bit this week as well as we go move some birds south. But really, the big news is that you know this coming week we have our substantial second substantial cold front of the 2021 season. Um, the last one was back in October up in the Dakotas that did move a good bunch of birds early on. We do expect 
increased snow cover at mid latitudes this week, but it's going to skip kind of the Great Lakes and Prairies uh, region. It's going to be a little further south, actually. So the numbers um, predict mallard and black duck migration early in the week in the Mississippi Flyway and kind of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the Atlantic Flyway. I do expect a movement of mallards. Um, a lot of what seems to be going on this year is if you got water, you have birds. If you're dry, you don't. And again, that's just these birds being adaptable, moving around, moving up and down rivers to find um, the habitat that they need. So water seems to be the biggest metric this year for those folks that are and are not shooting birds because it's dry a lot of places as well. For the weekend, the WSI predicts movement of dabbling ducks other than mallards and black ducks into southern portions of the Mississippi and Atlantic Flyway. So you know, we're talking about gadwall and widgeon and shoveler and green winged teal uh, to a large degree and a smattering of pintails. I'm talking Memphis South. So look for some real movement uh, in these regions uh, in for the, for the weekend. I would get out this weekend. I think you're going to have um, new ducks. Um, if you've got the opportunity to, I think I'd give a place rest and make sure I get a really good Saturday hunt in with family and friends. Um, cause that's going to give you some of the best opportunity. I think we've seen this season yet, not to get your hopes up, but just trying to hope you get out at good times here. Uh, water conditions slightly improved in mid latitudes in the Mississippi flyway, but you know, these especially dry conditions persist in sections of the mid upper Midwest and, and great lakes region. So here's the table for mallard and black duck this week. Again, we continue to see, uh, blue popping up. Um, especially here early in the week. And then late in the week, Ottawa has, uh, in the Atlantic Flyway, a really long string of uh, pretty pretty su substantial WSI values. They're getting into the negative uh, digits Fahrenheit. Um, and so it's going to be a pretty cold one up there. And hopefully that moves some birds, some mallards and black ducks further south in the Atlantic Flyway because we've been We've been pretty rough. Um, Central New York's also in a massive drought right now. So we're having a hard time finding any of these birds and having them stick around for any period of time. They seem to be here for a bit, but then move on if there's any pressure. Um, so hopefully we can pick up some more birds. But looking at, you know, again, more blue than we've seen in a while. And there's a lot of mallards stacked up in the Iowa and Missouri latitudes. So it looks like we might get some movement of those birds, especially, again, early in the week in the Mississippi flyway. Now, if we contrast this with past years, um, and if we go to Green Bay, Wisconsin, we look at when t when the weather severity index for mallards hit that threshold in 2019 compared to 2020, and we're just getting there now. If you look at this, right, 40, day 43 to 73, and that's starting on the 1st of October. So we're looking at nearly, you know, or, or a month or more uh, difference you know, now and look at 19, we have this huge, would have been a huge movement in the last week of mallards out of um, kind of the upper Great Lakes region, right? And in 2020, we're just starting to dance around that. So if you are not seeing mallards in the Mississippi Flyway, um, this is a pretty telling story about where they might be. We go to the Atlantic Flyway and we look at Ottawa, Ontario, it's just about the same scene, right? 2019. In 2020, hugely contrasting. Um, you know, we're we're about a, a month apart on the on the mallard movement, and until recently, we can start to see these dots of the 2020 WSI values and the 2019 values start to converge a bit here in the coming week. And that's my expectation is that we're finally going to see a movement of mallards um, in the in the coming week. Unfortunately, you know, places like New York might be locked up as well, so these birds are going to be on big water. Um, in rivers likely in the coming week unless we get a, a big thaw um, thereafter. So my expectation is the big water hunters for mallards would be doing doing okay. We've got lakes wide open um, without a lot of ice, you know, even up into the Adirondack Mountains in New York. The small wetlands are frozen, but the big lakes are still open. So I think the big lake hunters in the Atlantic fly will do well. And hopefully we get a movement of those birds a little further south than the New York headed down towards Chesapeake and in the mid-Atlantic coast for some folks to have some opportunities there. Pintail are really starting to light up blue quite a bit. Um, I'm, I'm, I did, my expectation is there's a trickle of them out. None of these are really substantial. Um, New York had a bunch last week. I think in the Atlantic flyway, if you're going to have any substantial movement, that's where it's going to be at during this coming week um, into 
kind of mid-Atlantic and then even a little bit uh, south of that. Uh, North Carolina, I would expect, should be really picking up and holding pintails uh, at this time. And then anywhere, you know, Tennessee-ish, um, kind of south in the Mississippi flyway, I expect Boot Hill, Missouri, in that region has a fair number of pintail at this time. So should be some movement of these birds this week. Um, but again, they're a little hardier than some of the other uh, dabbling ducks, but not as hardy as mallard and black ducks. So they're they're moving, but uh, largely a trickle this year in a lot of places. Gadwall, um, you know, another, my expectation, again, late in the week for these other dabblers, it looks like. They, they take this kind of cumulative effect of cold weather. So late in the week, I'd expect them to be moving. I'm kind of still holding on to like Iowa and Columbus, Ohio, despite that their WSI values have been great enough to cause declines. Um, I'd say that that Iowa latitude is probably going to freeze these and other dabbling ducks out during the, the coming week. Um, we had them around the Syracuse and central New York region and the Atlantic flyway up until, you know, recently. But my expectation is that these on this next cold snap, these birds are really going to be moving out. And we can see bir these birds even moving further south than, than Washington, D.C. So Chesapeake Bay folks south should keep an eye out. Same thing for shovelers, right? A um, little less tolerable of these conditions, so there's going to be good movement. And again, it's, it's kind of later in the week. And as you can see, I kind of say froze out, no more forecast for, for these birds. That doesn't mean that everything's completely froze out, but it's been long enough over their threshold that these birds are pretty well gone from um, from these latitudes at this point where I block them out. And then widget and green wing teal, which are the most sensitive. Um, this is a bunch of birds that are southern counterparts, you know, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina folks should be taking advantage of at this point. They should be really getting there in, in good numbers. Um, you know, the furthest south locations, they're going to be trickling in over time. I haven't seen a massive push. I think this week will will make a, a push of birds out of mid latitudes into southern latitudes. So keep your eye out. Again, I think the, um, you know, early in the week in the Mississippi flyway for a mallard black duck movement. And then, you know, late in the week by Saturday, there should be a good bunch of other dabblers around. Um, and if you don't pound away on your mallards and black ducks during the week, you should also should have them on, on Saturday um, at your hunt locations, hopefully. Take a look at river gauges again. I don't think this really picked up the water from last night's rain yet um, too much. It, it did, you know, there was a swath of rainstorms that went through kind of Arkansas and Tennessee and the Boot Hill, Missouri, up through Kentucky and Southern Illinois and Indiana. It's moving towards the Atlantic coast now and going to make snow as, the, as it runs into the cold front around kind of say the deep Washington, D.C. area is going to be a bit of the epicenter of it and into Pennsylvania a bit. That's going to spin off the coast quick, and then we're going to warm back up into the, you know, in the, in the Great Lakes region, even, you know, mid-30s, high-30s um, by, the, by the weekend. But there's a lot of orange in there yet. Um, you know, those, these are pretty bad drought conditions that exist in the Great Lakes and, and upper Midwest, so not a huge amount of change um, from, from last week. But hopefully improving for some folks with that rainfall last night in part of the world that needs a bit of that to produce duck habitat. All right. Thanks, folks. That's this week's forecast. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can email me at weeklyduckmigrationforecast at gmail.com. And uh, have fun out there. Enjoy the second cold wave and uh, be safe and shoot straight. See you next week.